Good afternoon, everyone. Taking a look at the monthly fireball totals for the last decade or so. Urban Heat Island actually shows as much as 4 degrees Celsius increases in nighttime, summer, low temperatures. China worried about huge impacts from climate change. They mean the grand solar minimum. Connection of solar activity, war, peace, and the human mind in the second millennium. Sasha Dobler. Red Sea locust swarms. Why are there so many locusts in the desert? Oh, because they had all-time record floods that now made the deserts bloom across the Middle East. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage. A nice, affordable starter kit. Two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. And please join me Thursday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, Eastern Standard Time, Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. We're all be sitting down for a couple hours with Scott Chapman, and we're going to be putting together a Grand Solar Minimum Beginner's Guide, an easy-to-understand lexicon of the different words, so you can stay in the debate and understand what these changes are as this becomes more discussed in the mainstream media. Now, I've had many of you ask me with the weakening magnetosphere, are we going to see more fireballs and is there any way to get some traction and some numbers on this to see if anything's increasing overall in terms of space debris entering into our lower atmosphere. So I'm going to start you back here in 2005 and you can see the progression up through 2013 at around 18,400 reported fireballs in the U.S., Definitely an upward trend on that. So continuing on with 2013 through 2016 seems to be the highest instance was in November of 2015. So I'm going to bring you up here all the way to November of 2018. So you can see 2015 compared to 2018 in November, very similar. November 2018, just a sliver below that record number in 2015. Now what's coming into Earth's atmosphere and burning up that's visible with the eyes is a little bit different than the near-Earth asteroids that NASA keeps a data set on at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This takes us from 1995 to 2015 and it shows the same uptick in activity. So it does seem that the region of space we're entering into has more debris along with the weakening magnetosphere that can penetrate further down into our atmosphere. So eyes to the skies. Maybe you'll see a flicker up there. Make a wish. Andrew Siffert putting out this little nugget here. Great paper on the urban heat island impact of temperatures. Now wait a second. You're telling me that urban heat island effects can skew temperatures as much as 4 degrees Celsius in the nighttime summer low temperatures? Well, perhaps our data that we are saying the warmest year ever could be influenced by this. What do you think? Also, Dr. Roy Spencer chiming in, talking about how the data is manipulated where it's very clear in this chart. Top is the mainstream media globally running with this runaway narrative from 1960. It's up and up and up. But when you trim away, you start to see that it's just a pattern. Warming and cooling, warming and cooling. And then China chiming in. This is a couple years ago, 2015, but it's just as relevant today. And China keeps, it's like copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. In all the news articles since that time, they're incredibly worried about climate change. Let's switch to the lexicon. Grand solar minimum. So if we do use these terms interchangeably, we still come up with the exact same thing. Grand solar minimum could have a huge impact on China and reducing crop yields. Climate change could have a huge impact on China reducing crop yields, threatening river flows and harvests. It's all about the moisture patterns moving as the jet streams shift into new areas. Because every grand solar minimum, China has always collapsed because it could not feed its people. Now, talking about the effects of precipitation movement, droughts throughout the planet in the grand solar minimums is one thing. 
But Sasha Dobler here has broken it down into an even more granular formula of information flow here. The connection of solar activity, war, peace, and the human mind. When these eras in history occurred, when there were enlightenment, dark ages, and just how society has shifted as these changes in solar activity recur on cycles in 400 year duration or more heavy powerful cycles. Here it is, solar history. The connection of solar activity, war, peace, and human mind in the second millennium. Links in the description box below. I've also done a previous interview with Sasha when we talked about the Black Death and how society was so greatly affected during the Wolf Minimum. Taking a look back here, Carbon 14, this is the centered dates and the duration of the Grand Solar Minimums. 1616, 1373, 1517, and 224 AD. And what's most interesting and striking correlation is the top right here for the magnetic North Pole moving. See where it stopped at 200 AD? Here we are with the North Pole right now, 2019, but if it clips over to where it was in the year 200 AD, we could expect massive weather changes to accompany this. So for me, it looks more like a repeating pattern. And more unusual events where over the last six months, the Middle East has received all-time record rains. This is desert, flooded, we saw the massive amount of inland sea water, literally years worth of rain in, in just a day. Riyadh, cars floating down the streets. And the outcome was so much grass, the deserts blooming. Enter the locust swarms. Not only did the cyclones in Oman and Yemen, parts of Saudi Arabia, get so inundated with rains that lakes formed, but also through northern part of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq, record rains as well this year. So much new grass has come out of the desert sands that this locust swarm is three generations deep. That's how much food they have to keep going. The empty quarter. They weren't actually growing crops there. It was more fodder for animals. But now look what nature has provided in terms of bounty. So where was it that I heard again in some prophecy for the future that the deserts will once again bloom and become green as we approach the change in our current civilization? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to visit our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. Long-term food storage. Remember, every single purchase helps keep Adapt 2030 independent and on air. Links below in the description box. And if you like this type of information, 30 minutes at a time, many Ice Age conversations, anywhere you can find a podcast hosted across the net. And if you like your information in one minute or less, snippets run down on the Adapt 2030 social media feeds.